I'm Michael Mattel, president and founder of the Fatty Liver Alliance. We raise awareness about the risks, causes, and complications of fatty liver disease and help those already diagnosed with Massel than MASH by advocating for access to approved treatments and care. Today, we are chatting with an incredibly passionate and patient-driven hepatologist from Mississauga, Ontario, Canada, Dr. Supriya Joshi. Dr. Joshi is the chair of the Fatty Liver Alliance Medical Advisory Committee on our board of directors and is incredibly popular, yes you are, on Instagram with almost 22,000 Liver Health MD followers. Supriya, for patients who already know that they have Masseled or MASH, it's scary. It can be scary for many people. And What do they need to know about speaking the, in quotes, medical language necessary to communicate effectively with their physician? And how can they best facilitate and feel comfortable dealing with their physicians and conversations uh, when they when they meet with them? That's a great question. And partly, I was thinking as you're doing this intro, the question you're asking is partly why I started this Instagram page, just patient-centered. Um, as someone who's been practicing for 20 years, and you're right, when patients are told they have this condition, they're very frightened. And I think, firstly, being told you have liver disease carries a huge stigma. They automatically think, well, everyone thinks I drink too much alcohol. Everyone thinks I have a, a viral infection that I got from drug use, but I don't use drugs. I don't drink alcohol. So there's initially the first two stigmas that people automatically assume that you think of them. And so I think in terms of the patient's having a comfortable conversation with their doctor is to trust that that's not what their doctor thinks of them. So there should be removal of stigma. There should be an, an attempt to make the patient feel comfortable. And the patient hopefully will learn to be open to that and that we are being honest with them. And so when they are told they have a liver issue and they're being referred to a liver specialist, trust that they are having all causes ruled out and no assumptions are being made. So that's one. And then secondly, for them to understand that there are more liver diseases than alcohol or hepatitis C or hepatitis B. Because many people don't believe that there aren't any other liver conditions. And there are, as you know, there's autoimmune liver disease, there's inherited liver diseases, there's genetic liver diseases, and then there's this big basket of metabolic liver disease that you identified. Right. So, I think also when it comes to metabolic diseases in general, as people age, they become so normalized. So I think people think, well, everyone develops type two diabetes when they're 45 or 50, everybody gets high blood pressure. Who is not on a cholesterol lowering medication? Who doesn't gain weight in their, in, in their forties? So I think it's been assumed that all of this is part of the normal aging process. And liver disease, as you know, this is why both of us are in this world together trying to bring awareness, is that liver disease has really been ignored for a long time in the spectrum of metabolic diseases. So teaching people that liver disease is in, in fact part of that umbrella, and I feel it's the actual initiating event to many of these metabolic diseases. The fatty liver was present long before they developed type 2 diabetes or before that person may have had you know, development of ischemic heart disease. And that's because the underlying theme for all of these conditions, many, is insulin resistance. And there is a gross misunderstanding of this connection in the medical community and henceforth in the general population. So I think understanding the connection is important and explaining this to patients in people-friendly terms is essential. And I think what I've learned is that when people understand the connection, it's like, aha, now what led to this? And can I play a role in improving this? Okay. So, Supriya, thank you for that. Let's take the position of patients, and you speak to patients every day. So, I'd love to have you give your advice directly to patients who are watching this. Uh, trying to give them the confidence that they're going to need to meet with their physicians. It's really scary when you find out that you have something really serious like this and, and it, most of them just found out. And so, it, you know, the doctor's really busy. They went in and they went out. They probably didn't hear half of what the doctor said. So what do they need to know? They're going to go back for a follow-up. What What's the language that they need to speak? Do they need to have a, an awareness of the different 
um, terminologies that are used? Absolutely. So I think the terms that liver specialists use or gastroenterologists use when describing to patients is the severity of their metabolic liver disease. Mm -hmm. Understanding that there's two important things we look at. First is the severity of the hepatic or liver steatosis. It's mild, moderate, severe. And, and they can go back and forth on that spectrum depending what's going on in their lifestyle and health. The second score is, is there any liver damage? So I tend to show people this chart in my office of stage one fibrosis, two, two, three, and four, with four being established liver cirrhosis. And if people develop liver cirrhosis, of which about 20% of individuals can, but that number we know is increasing um, in the years to come, then they're at risk of complications of cirrhosis, which could include liver cancer, liver failure, jaundice, and they might even need a liver transplant. So a proportion of those with liver cirrhosis may develop that. So one thing I want to make sure patients realize is where are they on the spectrum of liver damage or fibrosis? Majority of people have none to minimal or mild liver fibrosis, yet they may still have severe fat infiltration of their liver. And so when I have that scenario, which is the most common, I'll explain to them, I'm actually not so worried about you developing liver cirrhosis or liver failure in your lifetime, but I'm more concerned with that severe liver fat infiltration indicates to, to us. When I see that, that suggests to me, you likely have severe insulin resistance or you're consuming um, something in the diet or alcohol or medications or other medical conditions that could be contributing to this severe liver steatosis. So once I explain where they are on the spectrum of this liver disease, I think then they feel like they're really reassured and then they can focus on what they need to do. So yeah, I've got severe fatty liver disease, but I don't have liver damage, which is great. And they understand that could change and progress over time if they don't initiate changes to optimize their insulin resistance and metabolic health. Then I'll then explain how they can do that. Okay, so what resources do you think that they could use specifically for some of the terminology that they're going to need? Like they're going to have to know, for example, it would be helpful to know what is fibrosis, what really, what is fatty liver? So they understand depending on where they are, obviously, you know, uh, what is, uh, hopefully they don't have cirrhosis, but if they did, what is cirrhosis? Uh, would it help to start to do some research online so that they can understand what those words mean? So when they hear them from their physician, they'll know? It's a great idea. So um, actually, and your site will be a great place actually to have that as a resource, you know, to explain exactly that, you know, uh, and I would go to vetted source uh, to explain what our stages of fibrosis, how long does it develop or take to develop into those stages, what can accelerate that progression and what things people can do to slow down that progression of fibrosis and also how to improve um, the fat infiltration of the liver. I think having a, a good go-to resource would be fantastic for people. Okay. Can you think of, let's say, off the top of your head, the top five or six uh, medical terms related to muscle and mash, fatty liver disease? What 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 are the ones they really need to, to understand? Or, okay. or do they need to just understand anything? Would it just go to the doctor and the doctor will explain everything or should they prepare? I think if they can prepare, it's great. So many of them may already have pre-diabetes or type 2 diabetes. Okay. Imperative to understand there's a connection. Um, understanding the connection for many of their conditions that many people already have diagnosed together, which is the constellation of elevated or increased waist circumference, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and pre-diabetes, type 2 diabetes. That with muscle is basically one group of conditions. So there's a connection and an improvement in any lifestyle measure may improve one or all of them at the same time. So knowing that these diseases aren't fixed in stone, they don't need to progress and worsen, needing multiple more medications as they age. It, it's never too late to make changes. That's the one thing I really want to impress to people. It's never too late to make changes. And understanding the key terms of insulin resistance, this is something yeah, that people yeah. need to understand they need to understand the concept of sugar intake in the recommendations of no more than 24 grams a day, which is six teaspoons. 
and understand that more grams of sugar is one teaspoon and education on label reading is I think important for people. I think understanding that um, alcohol plays a role in accelerating their, their diseases and understanding also the current guidelines on no alcohol is considered to be safe and, and being mindful of keeping under two standard alcohol drinks a week. Anything more than that is associated with increased risks of cancers and progressive liver disease and even heart disease and dementia. Okay. Thank you. So Supriya, in your life, you're going to summarize this uh, at the end of our chat here. Uh, what advice would you give? And and you can pretend I'm a patient. I have been a patient, actually. So what would you say to me? I, I, I got a call from my doctor. They said, maybe they told me on the phone that I have either either muscle or mash fatty liver disease. Um, what's your advice so that I'm ready for this meeting and I make the most of it? Okay. Well, I'll first say this is a common problem. You're not alone. Um, it's probably been there for a while and it's unclear when it started. But if you've noticed, you know, weight gain, development of the medical condition, that this fat, this liver issue has probably been there before that and is a signal for potentially worsening conditions. So it's not too late. Don't panic. The time is now to initiate changes. So I want to give you that reassurance. Um, and next, I want to ask you, do you understand what it is you need to do? And we'll talk about the pillars of improving your metabolic health, which includes your nutrition, what you eat, what you drink daily, your sleep quality, do you move your body, and exercise is key. And it doesn't need to be go run a marathon. It means a combination of strength training, conversational pace, zone two, heart rate exercising, and even just aiming for 10,000 steps a day. That itself will reduce the risk of cardiovascular event and improve your liver disease, your, all your metabolic markers. Um, if you're not sleeping well, talk to your doctor for getting screened for sleep apnea. And then for most people in North America, I do recommend certain supplements such as vitamin D because most people living in North America are vitamin D deficient. I know there's been some debate about this, about whether or not it is related to insulin resistance, but I think it is an easy thing to correct it's not toxic, it's safe, it's inexpensive. So I do recommend vitamin supplementation along with consideration for omega-3 fatty acids and magnesium glutinate because taking magnesium really does help the mechanism of action of vitamin D in the cell so that it can work and do what it's supposed to do and optimize um, insulin sensitivity and glucose metabolism. So to quickly summarize, nutrition, what you need to drink, good sleep, moving your body, and... Um, and a few vitamins that might also help. And your message has a lot of hope in it. And I'm sure everybody appreciates that outlook as well. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. There's no reason not to be optimistic. And it's never too late to make changes. And little changes consistently have a huge impact. One step at a time, right? Exactly. Direction, <laughs> right? Not perfection. Thank you, Dr. Joshi. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks for all the work you're doing, Mike. Thank you.